Glass Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. This just is stop. a sham. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Tuesday, everybody. How we feeling? You guys going? You guys going to prom together? Yeah, prom. <laughs> this is homecoming over here. Oh, right? it's homecoming. homecoming. All right. A little yeah. bit more lax, I think. This. Yeah, I look like I'm going to prom. You match perfectly yes, with Al's tie and pocket uh, square. You know we have matching outfits to go to the amusement park after. <laughs> yeah. Did you bring a crochet for yeah. her? Yeah. <laughs> Shay. What's that called? A croissant. Oh. <laughs> and clearly Listen, half the people too. in here laughed without even like, knowing yeah, the right answer. Crochet for her? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's how I today's going to go. Uh, that's yeah. uh, every day. A nose gay, but I'll go with the croissant. A a nose gay. A nose gay is very cute. What is this? See, like, I would be scared health. to even say that word. I can't. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. The well, flower. Word. Okay, we're, yeah. we're this All is right. ridiculous. No. Okay. All right, we've you got started. an update to the Kanye West story from yesterday. So Adidas announced they're ending their partnership partnership with him due to his anti-Semitic rant. That means they will stop all production of their Yeezy brand sneakers, a deal worth, get this, $1.5 billion. Adidas says Kanye's recent comments and actions have been unacceptable, hateful, and dangerous, and they violate the company's values. So with Adidas ending their partnership, is it possible to completely cancel Kanye, or will he always have a voice? Tori, we talked about this yesterday on a different show. You didn't really get to share your comments on this show about how you felt personally about Kanye's right. comments. Um, I don't think we're canceling Kanye. I think Kanye's a bigot, and I think it's okay to say that. Canceling to me has really been backfiring for a lot of reasons, and we should call an anti-Semite an anti-Semite. He's made comments about the black community as well that made people very uncomfortable. Um, I think he's done. I don't think he's done good music in a very since 2016. So he had his fashion, but Vogue dropped him, Balenciaga dropped him, he dropped Gap, and now Adidas. Um, here's wow. how I feel. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, he was making 220 million from Adidas and he's no longer now going to be in the billionaire club because of everything that's happening. The Floyd family is also suing him for 250 million for defamation. So he's got a lot of stuff on him. Put Kanye aside. I don't talk about bigots that much. I want to talk about Adidas. I think Adidas didn't win this one. I'm glad they stopped. But to me, when Kanye comes up and says, I can say anti-Semitic comments and Adidas won't drop me. Let me say that again. He says it again and then he says, now what? And you waited. And you waited and you waited and you waited for the cycle. Stocks dropped. People st stood up. Other people, CAA canceled. By not saying anything, your statement was very loud <laughs> about what you stood for, especially with the past of Adidas, and what you're willing to get rid of because the, it makes them 250 million a year. So I, I have a horrible time saying, go Adidas on this one. Well, I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm glad they made the decision. It took way too long for me. In a weird not non-defense of Adidas, but I will say this, and Erica, I thought about you when we did this uh, story uh, yesterday. I mean, you've worked in radio forever. You've seen a lot of radio duos fired mm -hmm. for on-air stunts. And when, they, when they're fired, they don't say, hey, we just fired the Tory and Al show, what they do is they say Al and Tory are suspended while they figure out what they're doing with your contracts. So I figured when all this was going down and Adidas wasn't saying anything, their lawyers are like getting their ducks in a row. Then because, say that. But they can't, I, I don't know legally, you would know better than me. They can make a I statement. Don't, I don't know, but then you're allowing him to lawyer up. I think that the best thing to do is be quiet until you drop the hammer, which they did. Right, I think silence yeah, you to You don't me, think it was quick enough for? Not at all. We're talking about billions of dollars. They're, take, they're taking a big, big hit. I agree, I agree. But there's the Jews, a, you don't think there's, there's some a lot of contracts. But the Jews would be out. taking a much bigger hit right. if they didn't. And I don't mean to We're, we're talking that. business, right. so that you can't compare but, but those two. But he's making comments in the business because he represents Adidas. And when you do that and you say it's okay and you're silent over a weekend over the Monday news cycle you are letting us know as Jews you are more interested in the money than us right. an, it, aren't all big corporations I, well, I hate not. to say that Here, but I but think that's, that's a fair point I think yeah. you you both are talking about capitalism and Tori's talking about humanity Absolutely. but humanity actually drives capitalism because it takes humans to spend money and I think when you are silent and the silence is violent especially that was a call that was a call to to action. They, he taunted Kanye them. made a call to action, and they were the last company to do anything about it. I think Tori's right. I think that's going to backfire on them for quite some time. There was a change.org petition 
specifically for Adidas. for Adidas to cancel their contract with Kanye. So if enough people, and that went up to, I think, 150,000 in like a matter of minutes. And it was if, trending, Adidas right, dropped If Kanye. enough mi people are on this, like, following this story and they're emotionally in, and affected and impacted, it is, it absolutely didn't make any kind of uh, capitalistic sense or humanitarian sense for them to wait that long. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, see, I totally agree with you, but it's two different things I, I feel like, right? If we're focused on business and we're talking about that, of course you hurt people and saying those comments are unacceptable, of course. right? I know you know. But that. as a company, right. you're like, listen, this might sink us. Right. We have to put together our heads and be like, what are we going to do about right. this? Do we cancel Kanye? That is a large portion of our company. Huge. This is going to ruin us for future business. Like, not only Yeezys, but everything now we're associated with Kanye. This is a huge impact on Adidas. I think they needed to take a minute or two I, to think this through. And Instead of the, what we've seen in the past, and again, it's not what we've seen with these little comments the past two years where networks like, we're done with that person, see you later. And and I thought they acted too quickly in some of those senses, talking about networks and individuals. Right. This one, it's bringing in a lot more money than someone might for your network. It, 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 it takes a lot. And, you know, I, I understand that, that you wanted to move quicker. I think everyone did. I think Adidas everyone is going to look back and wish they did. But can we at least stop for one second and say that they moved? I did. I, I said th I'm happy. You did. But I'm, like, really happy. But, but I really do think for a moment it makes me happy that the people no. spoke and they got rid of them. They and got they, pushed they took into a, it. They took a major hit. It's still a lot of people. The NFL has not let go of people that have said problematic things. What if Michael things? Jordan yeah. had said really anti-Semitic things with his Jordans with Nike? That would be a big, it's kind it's of the cute. same thing. I know. I'm kind bringing it up to say yeah. that. But in the long game... Nike would lose more from not only their reputation, but for people who will now boycott, who will take it upon themselves to realize there is no humanity in this. If Adidas wants to be the brand that you can feel good about wearing, they messed up. I'll take it one step further because what Adidas really gave people an, a lot of time to pontificate and have conversations about were their Nazi ties from their founder. Literally. So Nazi it became ties. a question of is this ingrained in the company's moral fabric? That's the conversation that took off by them really delaying Is their this your action. culture? Yeah, right. but I mean, see, we were supposed to get to another story, but I'd rather keep it yeah, here let's because do it's it. interesting. It's, I don't know if you could do that because how many companies here in America were built off slavery that still oh, no, exists? Absolutely. How many companies overseas, Hugo Boss, I know one just off the top of my head, they made the uniforms for the right. Nazis, right? So it's like Hugo Boss is still in existence. But Kanye Can we West go said back and retroactively cancel everything that happened 100 years but ago see, and point the finger at Adidas for having that start? But see, here, here's the difference in what we're talking about. What Kanye did was put Jewish people in clear and imminent danger. I agree. So when you're in clear and imminent danger, that means that whoever is supporting that infrastructure needs to act swiftly. So when they weren't acting swiftly, it begged the question as to what is the moral fabric of this said foundation? Not every company, and we've had that conversation before, but if someone came in from any of the companies that you named and said, at this point, we are going to go death con three on name any marginalized group or community and that company did not act fast on that and it turned out that as you said it was the product of slavery or whatever it, you know yeah. whatever moral atrocity that we've had in this country or in this world then that is going to beg the question who is doing what and making those decisions as to how we as a company are going to go, go forward are we still ingrained in our past well I, yeah I no that, that I think that's I like the question you though you, we're saying who and what my my uh, I, uh, Adidas is a global company. Yeah. So when you make these decisions, this isn't like a mom and pop shop that realized the local athlete said something. This is these are international meetings that have to be taking place to figure out how we're Dude, going to, to move forward. Are you really trying I'm to tell me Adidas had to take four days to have conference calls and zooms? I get it. Well, but, but let me finish. Let me finish. One let me thing. Finish. One Wait. thing. Why I've been saying Balenciaga for the last week. Right. And now they finally made a move. How come you're not saying Balenciaga? They came out with Lay's potato 
hated Chip Bag in the midst of all this, and they're not getting any hate? First Why of, not Balenciaga? When he went and said this about the Jews, Balenciaga cut him off much quicker. He had walked in Balenciaga previously to saying the thing about But they the didn't Jews. come out and denounce him till Adidas and all of them did. No, I've Adidas been saying has it been for the last, week. last one. Balenciaga did it three days so before you, Adidas. It's cool to wear Balenciaga? No, I'm saying they reacted in a, in a timely manner. Had Adidas said this, it's a lot of money we need to talk about to our international, but we are looking at this and we are going to take this seriously. Even that statement would have been helpful. I, the I, silence I was I'd agree. definite. I'd agree with that. I think we, I know that we have to go. I think we do. I don't, yeah. I don't know the time. <laughs> uh, but I, um, we, we really need to talk about this on YouTube Live during the break yes. because there is another uh, factor to this. The idea that it was the public outcry and actually how long that took. Right. Because the moment that we started talking about this story to when there was a big public outcry and everyone was posting was vast in itself. Yeah. So that's a conversation we can get that's into fair as well. Guys, great conversation, for real. Really good conversation. I think I won. <laughs> you, know, you know, I feel like it's ironic all these companies like Balenciaga are making clothes for the homeless people and they think it's fashionable. All the homeless people are going to be wearing Yeezys now. It's yeah, so I was going to say, true. Yeezys are going to be yep. worth a lot more money if they stop production on them. But I don't are, know are about you that. Be Let's them? talk about it in a break. Check us out on heads, YouTube. We'll be not right me, back. but sneakerheads. Closed captioning provided by... I'm really tickled, y'all. Yeah, I love much. it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to sit here and okay. be right. I, have, I know y'all going to be mad at me, but I'm just telling you the truth. You can smirk all you want. You don't have to tell me to go. <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I are having a, a disagreement. We need your help. Okay, I, I'm, I'll set the table. I was saying that I think once Adidas has made this announcement that they are no longer going to make Yeezys, my thought was Yeezys are going to go up in value on the, on, on the black market, yeah, whatever, the second secondhand market, whatever, because they are going to be a commodity that you can't get anymore. Right. And I think anything, whether it's a car or, you know, a, a painting that they find at a yard sale, when they don't make things anymore, they skyrocket in value. But not when it has anti-Semitic Nazi ties. There, it does there's, now. What about in two years? Be, this, we, I mean, the, New Balance was known as the Tiki Torch shoe. Remember that when they went to Charlottesville? No, and, I don't. Well, I do. And it was the, if you wore it, it became... And I wasn't trying were, to be obtuse on No, anymore. not at all. Yeah. It felt like you were representing and elevating those people. Yeezys, to me, is a fashion decision that you're elevating Kanye to a level in which you would spend that much money. To me, that's a fashion choice that's easy to make to say, I'm not doing that anymore. Yes, but you're not a sneakerhead. Do you? Sneakerheads you know, don't have to be like not okay about are obsessed with hard to find shoes. What about is, not being anti-Semitic? Do you think that goes over being a sneakerhead? Yeah. I'm well, not saying it's me. I'm saying no. I know. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Al is right. Al is right. Why? Taking the morality out of the equation. Yes, having a commodity that is no longer in production, supply demand for sure, is absolutely going to skyrocket. Right. On and the you just need hand. one person. Right. That'll on pay the something second, crazy. Uh, on the resale. Yeah. Uh, market. Now, in terms of like everyone coming out, we showed the Kardashian stance and they support Jewish people and, you know, where we did this literally, what, two weeks ago? How long has this been? Yeah, at least two weeks. Two weeks ago. I thought it was a month. I had somebody actually send me a message saying, Where is your statement? Lady, we talked about this two weeks ago and we continue to talk about this. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. So it's not That's like, it's almost like if you don't put a black box, then it doesn't yeah. mean that you're doing it. Right. No. Is an action speaking louder than words? And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. Shall gather over on the other shore. When the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. Some really sad news. Welcome back. That was Leslie Jordan in his last Instagram post singing a song he was getting ready to release. Some stars are paying tribute to Leslie, who passed away yesterday in a car crash at the age of 67. He was known for his larger-than-life personality and shows like American Horror Story, Call Me Cat, and Will and & Grace. His former co-star, co Deborah Messing, remembered Leslie, writing, quote, The joy and delight you have brought into my life has been a beautiful gift. Viola Davis, who starred with him in The Help, tweeted, quote, Your heart 
was as big as your humor and his friend Dally Parton said quote he will be missed by everyone who knew him personally and everyone who is entertained by him rest in peace little brother uh, so many other stars uh, reached out on social media I was looking yesterday just people I follow how he touched so many people but I think if you just said the name to someone in passing Leslie Jordan he'd be like who is that like maybe they right. wouldn't remember but if you see his face, he's so memorable, right? Yeah, it, it happened when we did it, when we uh, had him on our, on our on our daytime show. You know, when I, I really didn't know the name Leslie Jordan, and I clicked on the link that, that was sent before in the meeting. I was like, oh my God, this yeah. Thing. You know, he just had one of his face, and there was a warmth to him. And it's that that thing in Hollywood, and everybody hates it. Oh, Erica just has it. He just has it. he had it. It's just like when people are around you, people are smiling. People smile when you talk. And it's as simple as that. And he just had that. And no matter who he was around, you know, A-list celebrity or just somebody watching him on TV, everybody loved him. I, we talked to him less than two weeks ago, and um, you know, less I, than a week ago, yeah, I think it was, like it was Wednesday. Last, Wednesday. last Wednesday. Was it last? Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday. You guys were talking to him. Yeah. Oh my God. Recently. Yeah. Like I mean, I I posted because at the end we had technical issues, and at the end of it we were like, you have to come back, and he's like, I want to come back, and he's like, I'm gonna spin the block, and I was like, spin the block, Leslie. Like I, love so I just like I don't, when I saw it, I I was in a meeting, and I'm like. Oh no! And I, you know, I was like really emotional in this meeting. And the, the person I was meeting with is like, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" And I'm like, "No, no, no, I'm okay." But am I okay? Yeah, like, right. You know, it just it really. He was just had such an infectious spirit, and it just it's tragic. It really is. Yeah, he walked into a room and it shimmered. I mean, he would make the whole place sparkle. And so when someone that alive dies at 67, when he was really on the up of his whole career, yeah. it's like hard to like even. Is he dead? Like, it was weird for me to imagine that. Um, but there's, again, I just, I learned about him during the um, pandemic. And a lot for of him people did. to yes. be a light, hey, hunker downers, hey, everyone, he just kept you up a little bit from, like, rock bottom. Right. And that man gave a lot of hope to a lot of people, and I wish his family the best. But, man, what a legacy to live. Let leave light in your wake. I mean, right. he would just walk by and light us up. And I hope it's not lost on us, like his last post, you know, just like singing and like still yeah. bringing joy. Creativity, I remember yeah. when uh, the rapper Heavy D passed away from a cardiac uh, situation, his last uh, Instagram po or a twit, uh, twit that he sent. Tweet? Uh, I think he's called a twit in past tense. Oh, I think Yeah, so. I think so. Or is it? <laughs> I, don't, I definitely think tweet. that's not I true. Think, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I said it like, but it, it, he just said, uh, "Be inspired." That was the last mm -hmm. thing that he left this this world with. And you hear interviews about him, and you hear interviews about Leslie, and they were this this incredible person the whole time, mm -hmm. and something we should all strive for. I think Leslie would have laughed. Yes, at the, oh, at the twit, at, at the, the twit comment. Not he might have, he might have laughed. <laughs> laughed. I don't know if that's right. He you will laughed. definitely be missed, Double my friend. Double down when you think you're wrong. <laughs> Coming up by DVL. <laughs> Celebrities are being used in dip, deep fake ads with or without their permission. We're going to talk about that next. The CDC recommends kids get all sorts of vaccines by a certain age, including chickenpox and hepatitis. On October 20th, the CDC voted to add COVID-19 to that list. Verify viewer Jacob texted the team to ask whether the COVID-19 shot is going on a mandatory vaccine list for children. And lots of people questioned if this vote made it mandatory for kids to get the COVID-19 vaccine in order to go to school. So let's verify. Is the CDC requiring children to get the COVID-19 vaccine for school? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra, and the National Conference of State Legislatures. According to the NCSL, the CDC Advisory Committee cannot mandate which vaccines are required for children to attend school. This is determined by state law. U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra, also confirmed that the CDC's decision is not about vaccination requirements, and any indication is otherwise untrue. So we can verify, no. The CDC isn't requiring children to get the COVID-19 vaccine for school. According to the NCSL, many states do align their vaccine requirements with the CDC's recommendations. But some states, like Florida, have explicitly banned student COVID-19 vaccine mandates. And other places, like D.C., didn't wait for the CDC's decision to make the COVID-19 vaccine a requirement for their students. Kids 12 and older in DCPS were required to get the vaccine this year. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till.
Welcome back. Some celebrities or at least their images are being used in ads without their knowledge or consent. So check out this computer generated deep fake of Elon Musk that's being used in a marketing video for a real estate company. Watch. Elon here. I'm a little tied up at the moment. At first, I thought this was a revenge kidnapping by Grimes. Then, after six days and cycling through all my enemies, and let's face it, I have a lot more enemies than Bezos and his millions of underpaid employees. All right, so we said that was a deep fake, so I, I kind of saw that, but how about this? Another company called Paperspace used some other celebrity deep fakes as an example of how the technology can be used in ads. Let's take a look. So if you've seen deep fakes on the internet, you might be wondering, well, how do I get started making my own? If you want an easy way to get started, check out paperspace.com slash deepfakes and let the Paperspace team guide you through the machine learning tools and compute instances that you'll need to get started. Have fun. <laughs> it looks like Tori's husband a couple hours totally ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it totally did. But what do we think about this? Because they're getting away with this. This is very interesting because we're like five years away from perfection on this technology. I was going right? to two or three. Maybe, yeah. maybe so, yeah. maybe so. But there's a law out there, if you didn't know, so like Saturday Night Live, when they used your likeness, mm. they use it in satire, which At gives parody, you, right. uh, as a parody, which gives you the legal right to do that. So the, they're using the same excuse, saying, no, 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 this is satire, it's just in jest, even though they're using it for a marketing tool, wow. clearly. So if they do change this law, how does that affect television as well as these deep fakes? That was, that was heavy. I, I, I was going to say. Felt like a college professor. This, this might be uh, the start of what you eventually run your presidential campaign in 10 years on, which is regulating the Internet. Because once money starts getting affected, once these are so close that you can't tell, and people who's, you know, LeBron James, people that are famous, and, and they start endorsing products that they are not actually endorsing, that will call for these major companies and corporations to crack down and get lobbyists in place, not us, the people, lobbyists with people's money to get some kind of regulation because that's the only thing that can change the course of where things are going with the Internet because when you have unregulated things like this, you could easily have Putin saying, launch the Kim nuke. Jung, you know? Kim Jong-il, I, I just launched a nuke, and you don't know if it's him or not. Do you, do you retaliate? or not I'm saying it's dangerous I completely agree I think this will be an entirely new set of laws we just haven't had it we're in the wild west of deep fakes oh, yeah. and Congress has to literally write legislation about this because it's getting too real too fast and we just hadn't caught up to it yet expect this to be a policymaker for several Congress people in the future to base their campaign on I swear we're in the wild west of the internet That's, period yeah. when you really think about people who are of, of age that the internet has always existed in their lives like they are generation. just coming of age right right now like they're the, making decision like the decision makers of our country <laughs> or of our world you know so it's like we are in the wild west still and it's going to continue to happen but it's yeah. going to change everything from like saturday night live to television itself to caricatures to the cover of time magazine you it's can't if they change can all that for, once you can sue i think it'll it's going to change right. everything yeah but so the, pretty big dish pretty huge. big deal for sure huge. we'll be right back Promotional consideration is brought to you by Imagine eating whatever you want and not having to work out six times a week to lose a pound. Okay, we have another success story. Many on social media claim by using the medication created for diabetes, they don't have to lift a finger and the weight just comes right off. So the question, does this new drug that was made to treat diabetes really work for weight loss? Let's verify. Our source is Dr. Pyle Coley and the Mayo Clinic. The drug is called a GLP-1. According to the Mayo Clinic, when blood sugar levels start to rise after someone eats, these drugs simulate the body to produce more insulin. The extra insulin helps lower blood sugar levels. It also helps curb hunger and slows the movement of food from the stomach into the small intestines, which Dr. Coley says works wonders for weight loss. Well, I would say the drug works, even if you're not eating healthy and not working out. It's really across the board that people are losing 
a, a fair amount of weight, 15 to 20 percent of their body weight. Coley says there are several different drug companies that offer these injections, which are expensive, but they are not always covered by insurance when used for weight loss. In general, to get insurance coverage, it can't be everybody who wants to lose weight. So you either have to have a body mass index greater than 30, which is a BMI that you know, technically puts you in the obese range, or you have to have a BMI greater than or equal to 27, which is the overweight range, with at least kind of one um, medical condition as a result of obesity. Dr. Coley says once patients start taking this GLP-1 to keep the weight off, they need to keep taking it or risk packing on the pounds again. At this point, the medicine has been designed for chronic weight management. So the idea is to get on the medicine and really sort of stay on it, um, to help keep that weight off. So we can verify that, yes, GLP-1, originally intended to treat diabetes, can work for weight loss. Okay, so there are some side effects. Dr. Coley says those are nausea or diarrhea, and she says some patients, if they do eat too much, can get sick. She says the best thing to do is talk to your doctor about the drug to see if you qualify. With your Verify, I'm Megan Bragg. A meme of cars bumper to bumper looks a lot like traffic in LA. But according to the Post, this is an electric vehicle graveyard in France. Other posts with similar claims have been around for years, saying France bought electric cars for civil servants, but it was too expensive to replace the batteries, so they were abandoned. Using these sources, I'll walk you through what's actually happening in these photos. First up, using Revi, a reverse image search engine, we verified that this photo was actually taken in China. Verify tracked the type of vehicles seen in the images to Chinese website Baidu. The vehicle model and the green logo match. According to the website, these EVs were being stored in a lot in Hangzhou, China. An article from the South China Morning Post confirmed the lot location. And an article from website India Times about the abandoned cars says they were once owned by Chinese company Microcity, which went out of business. So we can verify, no. This meme does not show an electric vehicle graveyard in France. The photo was actually taken in China. With your fast fact, I'm Ariande Till. Welcome back. You may keep an extra pair of sunglasses in your car or a pair of jumper cables, but here are some other items you should keep handy while Al snacks. <laughs> That's today's Auto Alert, sponsored by Ox, Ox Car Care. First, kitty litter is a great way to help you get traction when you're stuck on ice or in snow. Next, duct tape can help you fix a number of minor interior and exterior damages like ripped seats, cracked bumpers, and broken mirrors. That's nice. Put a little nice piece of duct tape over there. <laughs> Razor blades can be a lifesaver if you need to cut seatbelts in an emergency situation. And get this, a chalkboard eraser can be used to wipe fog from windows. Ox Car Care is dedicated to providing you with an amazing auto protection plan experience that works best with your budget. If you're looking for better car care, give them a call today at 1-800-690-7547. So Al, did you bring enough for the whole class? Uh, Tori brought in. So Bert brought me Ruggala. It's a Jewish delicacy. It's like chocolate, hazelnut, some cinnamon swirl, and I'm really excited to share. It's was, a delicacy? Was... Yeah. Oh, is that what you say? Or, yes. a, or, a, or pastry. a pastry. A pastry. Both. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or, a, or a crochet. <laughs> or a crochet. It's like caviar. <laughs> it's a pastry. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you can see